just going to stick to the usual remit, um, and that is of keeping the sketches um, as simple as possible. Um, and when we look at our reference, our photo reference, you know, this is what I see. You know, I was talking about the sketch and the thumbnail sketch. The, I see the design first in this. I see that there. I see this. Uh, hang on. Sorry, my pencil is just giving up the ghost here. I see this sort of shape running through the horizontal at the back here of, the, the, of those lovely cottages. And the building to the right hand side with, with a small amount of perspective on it. Oh, we'll deal with that in a moment. Um, now, the only thing I might need to give some consideration to is this large amount of green area on the left. Um, you see, the way I see this is that it's all a little symmetrical. So it's 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 not a they're not bookends from left and right per se what i mean is you know if this was a building then it would be too symmetrical for sure um but there's buildings on the right hand side whereas there are where there's a tree on the left hand side so in subject matter it's not symmetrical but in shape and that's the most important thing in shape it's symmetrical so it's almost as though we've got exactly the same shape on the left hand side as we have on the right hand side. Just change my pencil over. It's, it's, um, so what I need to do is change that. It's that that amount of symmetry can be very boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my little row of cottages a little bit further to the left hand side. Possibly take this building a little extend this building a little bit further. It's what we refer to as artistic license. Um, and then that gives me a smaller shape over here on the left. You still need the shape on the left. You, you certainly wouldn't want necessary to sort of drift out of the left hand side with nothing to stop you. Um, but I'm trying to make the, 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 the big shapes more interesting. So this is my slightly bigger scale shape on the right hand side. Now then, um, if I don't go, if I if I play this left hand side down a little bit, what we end up with it hopefully <laughs> is a nice, <coughs> excuse me, almost L shape. It's not quite an L shape because this isn't tall enough when we could make it taller on the right hand side if we wanted to. Um, but I'm just telling you like it is. I'm just sort of talking you through this as my, as in the way that my brain, the way my eye sees uh, the need to set this, this design up, okay? Uh, and we do, you know, it's something we'll be tackling as the, um, in future lessons, is the importance of being able to identify and make a good design. It isn't good enough just to say, well, you know, my photo says there's a there's a door on this building, there's there's a chimney, there's a whatever. There's um, if those components are either not big enough or they're in the wrong place, or there's some sort of imbalance, then then we have to do something to make the design more appealing. So and um, your clues are always in looking for some classic design shapes and and the l shape is one of them i could put if i really did want to bring in an l shape here it wouldn't be difficult all we'd have to do is if you look at the back of your photo there's a rather large individual tree about here well if we push this dark tree to the right hand side so it sits about here somewhere like this there, I'll just sh don't don't do what I'm doing. Don't shade it in as I'm doing with your pencil. I'm just doing this for your benefit. What that gives us then is something much closer to the L shape. There's the vertical. There's the horizontal. You look at it as an L shape on its back, if you like. There's the extended, uh, what would normally be the vertical part of the L, and that's the short uh, foot of of the L shape there. So these are all things that help to make our paintings look better. 
and and it does require you know that artistic license um if you had somebody um commissioning you to do this particular scene you'd have to you'd have you know you would have to make sure that they're happy with you manipulating the scene to make it a better painting now some people will and some people won't some people i mean, I mean i'm t- i know i'm talking hypothetically here we we we're probably not as we speak any of us and uh, having to do a commission of this <laughs> i'd be very surprised um but the point i'm making here is um what uh, art can be can be quite different to what to some people's to to people who don't paint to their expectations it can be um you might have to explain that often to to people is to say well you know that artistic license what's that what's that nonsense all about um well to a non sort of artistic mind um it, it might not make sense but they might look at the painting and say Do you know i really like this painting and unbeknown to them you've moved a few things to make it a nice painting and they're going to say yeah this is i love this painting i love I just love the scene um and if you showed them the photo that you work from they'd probably say whoa i see I, you know you've just moved you've moved things around um for good reason so hope i've made that point okay uh at the back here, there's a lovely abstract shape um, of sky. I'm not going to get fussy about that. Just sort of showing you sort of a, a line drawing version of it. Um, and this area above the cottages is a lot like that area that we were dealing with behind the lawn where the picnic um, where the picnic was going on if you remember it's an area that i always think paints itself i just call i just write that entire territory off as something that you don't need to worry too much about uh so the um i'll clean up my pencil work in a moment because when i'm talking i'm i i'm trying to sort of show you what it is i'm i'm, I'm referring to so i tend to put a lot of pencil work down um now I, what's really nice and what I really do like is the way that this, let me just show you if I get the, the, the photo back in. I really like, if you look at the left hand line, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping from one thing to the other. I, I'm, if you look at the left hand line here of this road, it's, it's pretty much unaffected by anything. It's pretty straight. Okay. Um, it's pretty boring but it's 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 good that it's boring because if we go across the road to the other side to the edge that's really interesting we have this little bit of wall sticking out and and the more you look at the uh, line that you draw as you're following this shadow shape back there of the wall of the house the more you realize that it becomes more about the light space the light patch the area of light it's that shape suddenly your eye gets drawn to once you've delineated this edge it's not so much what's in the dark interior. It's not so much about what's in the envelope on the le- right hand side. It becomes more about the sh- shape that you've created here in the light. And that's why shadows are so important. Um, they create it really abstract, interesting shapes. If we took the shadow away and gave the whole scene ambient light where there was no shadows, it would be a much there would be much less interest less depth in our paintings um we all love a, a, a sunlit scene you know it, it it cheers the soul it uh it, it puts a smile on our faces um so we need to learn how to paint shadows right let me just clean up a little bit on here <coughs> excuse me uh, and I'm just going to get rid of some of that line there, and I'll continue my this edge that I was doing here. But I do need really an idea as to where those roofs are. I'm not going to start counting the chimneys in the photo. I can certainly make that up, put a couple together there. Probably need to know roughly where the edge of the uh, roof or roofs are um and then how i divide my 
little boxes up, my little houses up, is probably something to do with the position of the chimneys, if you think about it. Um, so that'll do. You don't have to go into too much detail because, again, I think that's a job for the paintbrush. OK, but I do want to create a really nice right hand edge here. Something like this comes this way. Yeah, as I'm doing this, check as to where your um, your dark edges go out. Now, my, look at that. It's coincidence, and there's always coincidences. The edge of that shadow goes right out at the uh, corner of my piece of paper. Sometimes that's not good, but I, I think we're going to use that today. Uh, so whatever you, wh wherever you bring this line that you're making here, something like that, um, you must make note that it goes out about there. Okay. Now, I don't want to get too complicated about this, but if the um, if the ratio of width to to, to um, vertical of the photo is slightly different to the dimensions of your paper, you will probably have to make a few adjustments anyway. But they're subtle. I, I wouldn't worry about that. I, I think it's not as if we got a, a you know um, a two feet long piece of paper. It's close enough to this ratio um, to be um, to be accurate to be accurate enough. Um, okay, so that's the edge of the shadow. And again, I wouldn't normally pencil in a hard line uh, at the edge of my shadow. So we need to sort of knock that back, but I thought it was good to show you that anyway. Um, and then what goes on up here, we can see if we look carefully, and this is very typical of the use of photos. Um, you have to look very carefully at what's, inside this dark shape and that's because of the limitations of the camera um it um you know there are if you if you know photography you can probably improve upon these flat darks by manipulating the iso the aperture the the shutter speed of your camera um the white balance etc and all that but for us mere mortals like myself um, most of my photos will probably suffer a little bit for flatness in the dark areas. So, but I, so I'm, I'm just putting in here what I think I can see. And something like this, there seems to be a sort of wall there. It won't, it won't appear much anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Something that comes out about here, there may be a parked car, and I don't think that's required for this particular painting. Um, if you do want to put that parked car in, the only thing you should concern yourself with is a glimmer of a windscreen just about there and, and over the front end of the car, the bonnet of the car. There's a bit of light there. So you could, if you're mindful enough when you come to paint, um, show some light re uh, uh, surfaces to indicate there might be a car there. Everything else is just um, a pretty straightforward shape. There's a, there's a, there's a break in the roof. You, you can either make that much more simpler for yourself just by not putting a break in the roof and taking the roof across to the edge of your paper or do as I've done. I've copied it a bit there and there's some hint of some windows about here. Now, again, I may draw these in to tell me what's there. It's good to have, it's good to be informed before you paint, start painting, um, because you may need to um, imply these elements like windows. Doesn't mean you have to, but sometimes for the, for the, for the, to, to make a, a painting or a design work, you do have to pay lip service to um, a certain amount of realism, suggestions of windows and doors. If otherwise, the alternative is to leave it so flat and dark, it will be just a boring mass, um, uh, an area that, that does nothing for the painting, you know, has nothing to offer the, the, the viewer's eye. I'm just making sure that that wall there isn't too steep. In fact, 
the more I play around with that wall, probably the less I'm going to make of it when I do start painting. If anything, if anything, by, by sketching like this, it gives you an early indication of what might cause the problems, give you problems when you start painting. So if you're struggling to place this wall, there's a little message you should be picking up onto yourself. And that is, OK, perhaps we don't want to make too much of that when we start painting. Perhaps that's one item. That's that's one element, one shape that I should uh, play down and, and, and not worry too much about. We'll lose it in the malaise of paint and texture when we get there. Right. OK, I've got a very I've got a lot of pencil work at the end of my building there, which isn't good. I'll reduce that. There are buildings back here, but as I said earlier, this will be an area that will paint itself. What we'll do is when I start to paint around here, it's just leave, leave little pockets of light in that back territory. Um, so the left hand side, as we mentioned just a moment ago, sort of there's a slight bend towards the end of the road there. And you can see that this is probably a wider dimension than the photo because. Um, oh, it, no, I know. Sorry. What it is, of course, is I've pushed the left hand shape further that way, haven't I? So what that's caused, that's presented me with a problem. It's um, it's sort of saying that in the photo, I like the idea that the road back here tapers to about, doesn't, it doesn't start coming back towards us to about here in the photo. And I like, I do like that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna suggest that there's a shape back here I hope you can see what I mean here. Um, in, in, in the photo, that measurement there at the end of the road is very important because it's that that gives us the scale of things and depth. If we were to keep it as wide as it is in my drawing at the moment, back to over here, there's no sense of um, channeling your viewer. There's no sense of dimension and depth and, and perspective. So we've got to keep this measurement in our painting, despite having pushed this big shape over to the left. So as I say, my, my answer to that is to, we know that it goes out about here somewhere, but when we get to about here, let's say just there, we can push this little extended area of wall and hedgerow a bit further. So that means, I might just come this one. I keep adjusting it till I've got it where I want it. I might even push it further out this way. You can see, I hope now, I hope you can see rather just how, um, what the issues are sometimes in making your paintings appear correct. So yeah, we, we make things look good despite the fact that they're not always true to the to the real item to the to the real world to the real image okay i think i think i think that's probably sufficient there i think I'll, i think we'll get away with that this sense of squeezing this shape towards this point here because because the storyline i mean by storyline i mean you know the movement as you view this should always be the sense that you'll always be taken up this little road here, this bit of road, and into a disappearing corner over here. So the mind wonders what might be down the road on the right hand side behind these houses. Which is a slightly different um, principle or element, sorry, is to the, 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 the L shape is the design, but in a way the movement or story is is the way of getting your viewer to wonder what's around the corner of this road right let's get some paint going okay folks that brings us to the end of part one part two you will be able to see uh next week it will be uh, uploaded to youtube in a week's time from today so i uh, hope you've enjoyed this please uh, be sure to tune in for the next session part two and um, if you like what you've already seen, please remember to subscribe and hit the like button. And of course, hit the bell icon if you want notification of that new release as and when um, it's uploaded. You get immediate um, notification as to when part two will be uploaded. So thanks for your company. Hope to see you in the next one.